In the first Hell Week, I was still doubting myself. Sure. Because when you sign up, these guys come from the, the academy, mm -hmm. the Naval Academy. These guys oh, yeah. come from a lot of them, not all of them, but they come from really good families. Right. They're almost like their their dads were SEALs, their grandfathers were SEALs. Right. They they come from a, a lot better. I mean, I had to teach myself. <clears throat> I had to earn my way just to get in the Navy. Right. Let alone be a SEAL. Mm -hmm. And I quit Air Force training, and now I'm I'm, I'm going for the best. So my self-esteem, even though I was building it up and I lost weight and stuff like that, I'm now around the most uncommon of uncommon people. Yeah. And I'm like, my God, I'm here. Yeah. Do I belong here? Yes. Do I belong? Do, do, I, do, I, do I belong here? So mm -hmm. your, your mind has a good way of taking the path of least resistance. Whenever friction happens, friction causes growth. Mm -hmm. Whenever friction happens, that's why a lot of us don't have any growth because when friction happens, we go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, when friction happened, my mind said, oh, hey, man, let's, let's, let's yeah. get out of here, you're man. You're a fraud. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not real. Right. You've lied your whole life. You come from this, you come from this, you can barely read. Right. Those things, so whenever times got hard, my right. mind said, you're not good enough. Right. Let's go. Right. So my mind wasn't, my, my eyes, my mind weren't connecting. Right. So how do you combat that? So how you combat that is this. I call it the cookie jar. Okay. You have to remind yourself. We all have a story. We've all, all of us have gone through very hard times. Mm -hmm. But when we're, when we're in a hard time, our mind has a way of forgetting what all we've overcome. Mm -hmm. I have a way of taking one second when I want to quit and saying, okay, you endured this. So I look at my life and how I came up as the ultimate training ground. Mm -hmm. Versus most people look at it as why, woe is me, God, right, why, exactly. why? Right. I had to flip this upside down and say, hey, on a second, God was training me to be one of the baddest men on the planet. That's absolutely right. That's how, he, this, right. Was, this was my journey. Do you begin to realize in I this started, moment how mentally strong you are? Yes, because those things beat me. Sure. But they didn't kill me. No, not And at I all. was able to work around them and That's figure right. out ways through it. So when I was in the worst time of my life in Hell Week, I looked at everybody and said, I'm the most trained person here. Yeah, well, that's the truth. I've gone through more mental torture than any of you all can even fathom. Yeah. So I'm looking at the baddest people on the planet. I'm looking at them like this. You guys can't hold a stick. So I started looking at verses like, I don't belong here, versus like, I might be the baddest person to ever come here. Wow. Who could have pulled this off? Mm -hmm. Who could have been given a sewer to live in, in their mind, mm -hmm. and say, okay, at birth, I'm gonna put you in the worst place on the planet Earth, and let me see if you can go to the top of the mountain. Right. With nothing. Right. But just hard work, grit, and figuring it out, and not putting yourself back in the dungeon every time something got hard. So that's what became wow. my daily voice was, you really are the baddest person on right. the planet. Right. And after a period of time, you start to believe that. Right. And so that's what happened to the, you know, the first Hell Week, the second Hell Week, the third. Hell Week, that became my new norm. Yeah. So what most people fear, I can never go through one. I don't want to go through two. Right. Even SEALs would tell you that. That Navy, so I did 18 months in Navy SEAL training. Mm -hmm. It's only supposed to be six months long. Right. It became my new norm. Right. And that's what people don't do enough of. You're always looking for a new norm. And that's how I, my, my mind started saying, getting beat, getting tortured, suffering, broken legs, kidneys, you know, kidney issues, this is my new norm. And my mind started changing with the reality of who I want to be. And let me ask you this, because what I'm hearing and what I want our audience to, to really grab onto, David, is that past pain, if we go back and we own it and examine it, get healthy to the extent that we can now turn it into, hey, this has prepared us for future pain. That's right. And so when you're in that training, again, all of us, we, we have no idea. We're just watching movies, bad movies, right? But the physical pain is where it starts with the training. Right. And then that becomes an emotional toil as well, right? right. It's coming at you from where sometimes it's, it's physical and emotional because of how difficult it is to, to put up with the pain and not quit. Right. So how do we learn from you and the SEALs to handle our pain. We're in the midst of pain. 
what because it hurts mm -hmm. and it hurts physically sometimes obviously and then some of us are dealing with emotional pain mm -hmm. what do we do in those moments when we're feeling the most pain and we're going i cannot go one more second so this is the thing a few years ago the navy seals de designed a program called um the buds buds prep program and my last two years in the military i, I did 21 years mm -hmm. They sent me down to Great Lakes, Chicago, mm -hmm. and we were training these guys to get ready to go to Bud's SEAL training because a lot of guys weren't getting through. Right. We thought this program would help them get through. Right. So these guys would leave our program studs, push-ups, sit-ups, swimming, everything. But the numbers were the exact same. So I was scratching my head, like, how do work these guys go through two months of this before they get to Bud's and still quit? And I, and I will answer your question in a second. No, go for it. I started going back through my mind and realizing one thing. We were building bigger, stronger, faster quitters. <laughs> Why is that? If you don't work on the one thing, the most powerful weapon in the world is your mind. Yeah. So the answer to your question is this. Whether it be physical pain or mental pain, we all have to start from zero with pain. And what that means is, if you don't go back, we all have something that bothers us. Everybody in this world is insecure about something. That's right. Something in life, whether it be your family, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, your kids, something has messed you up. And whenever you're in physical pain, even though you might not be thinking about that mental stuff that happened to you, your mind is thinking about it. All these dungeons that we've created, all these trap doors mm -hmm. that our life has created. Most of the time we quit is because we don't have any mental tools to get us through the other side. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing for people is you have to examine why are you doing it in the first place? What makes people quit so much in SEAL training and in, in all other special ops training is the mind, it's, it's always comfortable to sit there, you watch the Navy SEAL show, yeah. Discovery Channel, you're in a 72 degree house. Oh, yeah. You have your lemonade, your yeah. milkshake, whatever. Like, yeah. I can do that. Oh, sure. You're comfortable. Although I'll say this, I never say that. Well, some people do. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> folks think, you know, because it feels very comfortable in that comfortable environment. Oh, I totally, absolutely. The second you get out there in that environment where it's 40 degrees, like in my third hell week, we, you know, we had a guy die of pulmonary edema. Died out there in my third hell week. You have to really want would able, you know, whatever you're going for. If not, all these questions that come up, like, like you said, how, how you go one more step further? Yeah. Your mind's gonna ask you all yeah. these questions. Mm -hmm. How can you go one more step further? If you don't have the answers to that, and I can't give them to you. Yeah, that's right. You have to know why am I here? Mm -hmm. For me, when I was going through SEAL training, I was willing to die. Mm -hmm. So all these negative questions that kept on coming up in my head, I had, I had the answer for them. It's those people that don't have the answer for those negative questions. Right. And, and if you can't ask those questions, you will quit. You've lived a life dominated by doubt and fear. How do you step into bravery? Step. That, that's how you step into bravery. Step. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear and that that step towards your fear is the step into bravery because we we're, we're scared of what we don't know and there is only one way to learn and to know and that is to confront that fear. You have to step, you have to go. And this simple action, this simple attitude, it answers so many questions. So many questions. How, how do you get to the gym every day? You step, you go. How do you, how do you change your diet? You step, you go. How do you overcome fear of failure?
Let's <laughs> go.